Isaiah. What separates us from animals? Self-awareness. Between our instinctual urges and our actions lies the voice of reason. If we can find a higher purpose, we are able to override our animal instincts. We can hold an ideal in higher regard than gratification of our senses. This is an ability that although within reach, few people accomplish. It is but repetition of the conviction of the greatest thinkers and of the mystics and the spiritual leaders of all ages that for every person who wished to advance in evolution and to attain real happiness, there comes a time when desires must starve, the animal passions must die. Nothing hinders us so much in the development and exercise of our powers as our external desires. Those powers are even by the slightest application of desire disturbed and hindered, therefore all desire must eventually perish but need not perish by the painful process of being killed by force. By transmutation, the lower desires will automatically shrink, dissolve and vanish. Suffering will then yield its place to constant exaltation, for freedom from desire, like the choicest extract from the choicest treasure, divine influences will come to him who liberates his soul of all carnal desires. We may be bound in this life to our physical senses, yet we need not be controlled by them. We are aware that we are a part of something bigger. Our perceptions lie within a limited spectrum of consciousness. The colors we see, the sounds we hear, the vibrations we exist on, they all have upper and lower limits to what we can perceive. Yet we know that there exists realms beyond those limits. The hummingbird has four color cones in their eyes that allow them to see many more colors than humans can experience. The fourth cone that humans don't possess allow hummingbirds to detect UV. A wider range of animals can hear sounds that we cannot hear. Our frequency of audible perception is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. A bat's hearing range is from 9 hertz to 120 kilohertz. Animals such as dogs, cats, mice, elephants, horses, dolphins, and more are perceiving vibrations in this world that we are unable to perceive. They are living in a universe that we don't have access to. Humanity and the self are intrinsically connected. We can sense something that exists beyond our senses. It's difficult to quantify in words. We operate like some kind of cog in a complex machine. But paradoxically, the machine we are building towards is our self. When we realize that the good of humanity is for the good of the self, we can act in accordance with ideals that are beyond our base desires. Sacrificing our sensual enjoyment for higher purpose is evolution. When you stop chasing desire and start working for humanity, you harness the powers of the universe. When you conserve your life force energies, they build up into a tidal wave of unstoppable force. This force is transmuted into your life's work, which ripples throughout the universe, deeply affecting every cell in every being in existence. We have seen this great power wielded throughout history by the greats, Tesla, Gandhi, Beethoven, Da Vinci. Their efforts have greatly shaped the world in which we live today. If you are to tap into this higher vibration of existence, of creative genius, then the control of your animalistic desires is of paramount importance. The Circadian Cycle If you are practicing semen retention, you are walking a path that very few on earth choose to walk. You are sacrificing one of man's most enjoyable pleasures in order to amplify the life force energy from within you. If the regeneration of your body and life force energy is of great importance to you, then you make semen retention your first priority. But this is not enough. If you wish to elevate your powers and regenerate your body further, then it is absolutely necessary to follow the circadian cycle that has been coded into your DNA. 
Semen retention is the generator of your life force, whereas your circadian rhythm is the regulator of your energy. It diverts the accumulated energy to your bodily systems and plays a vital role in many biological processes, such as sleep cycle, hormone secretion, cardiovascular health, body temperature regulation, glucose breakdown, and so on. The optimal regulation of these biological processes is what prevents our body from developing serious illness and disease. If we are to avoid premature mortality, cancer, diabetes, and degenerative illness, then our circadian rhythm must be adhered to strictly. If we are to maintain youth, amplify aura, and develop stronger magnetism, then we must abide by our circadian cycle. In short, early to bed and early to rise. This is how to live in accordance with nature. Whilst sleeping in the dark, our body produces the hormone melatonin. This hormone helps to regulate sleep cycle and also plays many key roles in the maintenance of organ and cellular function. It is believed to be originated to protect the unicellular organisms from oxidative products which were emerged from aerobic respiration. Melatonin acts on cellular homeostasis by regulating the main molecular mechanisms that sustain life and control death, such as synthesis and degradation of protein, energy supply, and pathways which trigger death to remove the defective cell or any microorganism from the tissues. Melatonin also regulates the cell's mitochondrial function. It is said that the nucleus and mitochondria of cells contain the most melatonin. Mitochondrial dysfunction and degeneration is known to contribute to cellular senescence, chronic inflammation, and the overall process of aging. Much like semen retention, the circadian system is another key to harnessing your life force energy and regenerating your body. These two practices coupled together will fundamentally transform you. Optimal energy generation and regulation is what we should be aiming for. It is of no exaggeration to say that you'll experience superpowers. Your speed of aging will slow down, your rate of cellular regeneration and maintenance will increase, sharpness of mind, just about all observable health markers will greatly improve. When we follow the designated sleeping patterns of the sun, we are following the rules that nature has set out for us. When you follow the rules nature has set out, you are awarded abundantly. This must be our ultimate goal, to live in accordance with the natural laws of the universe brings us in harmony with existence itself. The transformative powers of this small habit cannot be overstated. Following this rule is absolutely essential. Every area and function of your body will improve dramatically if you adhere to this simple principle. Your sleep time must take precedence over all else. I know it sounds to many an impossible sacrifice. Take a strict approach. That work that needs finishing after midnight, sleep now and finish it at 6 a.m. Realize that if you view sleeping early as a luxury and not a necessity, then you are doing so at the expense of your organism's biological integrity and overall quality of life. If utmost health, utmost aura, utmost attractiveness, utmost energy is your priority, if you wish to max out your body to its full strength and capability, then adjusting your sleep timing to the rhythm of nature will become your top priority. If you could do retention for a week, then you can sleep early for a week. The benefits of these two practices together will accelerate your progress and put you well on the way to achieving your life's purpose. Increased Attention why is it that during retention periods, many have reported being approached frequently by animals to play with them? This can also apply to strangers and kids also paying them more attention than usual. Is there any scientific rationale behind such an occurrence? And if so, 
What are the mechanisms at play here? Studies have shown in mice that sexual attractiveness traits are used as reliable indicators of disease status, which influences their social interactions. In short, mice perceived as more attractive are thus seen as higher potential for mate selection. This results in a higher frequency of social engagement and mating opportunity. Further research has indicated that female mice have an aversion to castrated mice and mice with suppressed testosterone levels. When we retain, it has been shown scientifically and many times anecdotally through blood testing that testosterone levels dramatically increase during retention periods. Other health marker improvements have been observed, such as hair regrowth in castrated Pomeranian dogs. Various animal, insect and human studies have correlated sexual abstinence to longer lifespans and thus overall improved immune system function. In human studies, infants from as young as three days old to six months old have been observed to look longer at attractive faces in comparison to less attractive faces. Similar research was also conducted in adults with the same results. It said that facial and physical beauty is an honest reflection of one's genetic quality. It was noted by Olsen and Morshetz that there are perhaps other factors at play than just facial aesthetics when potential mates are gauging overall attractiveness. However, those other traits become known over a longer span of time, whereas facial attractiveness traits can be processed within a matter of milliseconds. If attractiveness is to be correlated with increased overall health and reproductive activity has been correlated to reduced lifespan, then it should follow that abstinence and restraint of our reproductive faculties will both improve health markers, attractiveness traits and boost our overall lifespan. We can deduce from this line of reasoning that an organism that is refraining from the use of their reproductive faculties should be able to initiate greater attraction and response from the opposite sex due to the overall strengthening of their own organism's quality. It becomes quite clear and reasonable to assume that when engaging in the practice of semen retention, one would experience the phenomenon of increased attraction from other humans and animals due to increased health markers associated with their reproductive restraint. Conversely, many doctors of past centuries researched masturbation in depth and published works on their findings of sexual excess from their careers of dealing with patients. Dr. Samuel Auguste David Tissot, a world-renowned doctor, who was even praised by Napoleon himself, published writings in 1760 on the topic of sexual excess seen in his patients and wrote that masturbation causes young persons to assume the air and the diseases of the aged. They become pale, stupid, effeminate, idle, weak, and even void of understanding. Their bodies bend forward, their legs are weak, they have a disgust for everything, become fit for nothing, and many are affected with paralysis, and another, and the too great loss of semen produces weakness, debility, immobility, convulsions, emaciation, dryness, pains in the membranes of the brain, impairs the senses, particularly that of sight, gives rise to dorsal consumption, indolence, and to the several diseases connected with them. The implications of sexual excess and the benefits of reproductive restraint both support the same premise, that is, that semen retention seems to improve the quality of the organism, and as a result we see a cascade of benefits such as the previously mentioned increased attraction from others. Please take note, I am not a doctor. I have read and researched these findings myself and reached this conclusion independently. I strongly recommend that before accepting my own point of view, that you research the available data yourself to form your own conclusion. Ramacharya Many are the keys to health, and they are all quite essential. But one thing needful, above all others, is Brahmacharya. Pure air pure water and wholesome food certainly contribute to health. But how can we be healthy if we expend all the health that we acquire? 
How can we help being paupers if we spend all the money that we earn? There can be no doubt that men and women can never be virile or strong unless they observe true brahmacharya. Mahatma Gandhi There are various schools of thought among cultures as to how sexual abstinence is practiced. The brahmachari do not encourage stimulation from sexual thought. All thoughts and actions of a sexual nature are to be eliminated from consciousness. My dear brothers, the vital energy, the virya, that supports your life, which is the prana of pranas, which shines in your sparkling eyes, which beams in your shining cheeks, is a great treasure for you. Remember this point well. Virya is the quintessence of blood. One drop of semen is manufactured out of 40 drops of blood. Mark here how valuable this fluid is. A tree draws the essence of rasa from the earth. This essence is circulated throughout the tree, its twigs, branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. The shining colors and life in the leaves, flowers and fruits are due to this rasa. Similarly, the virya that is manufactured by the cells of the testes out of blood gives color and vitality to the human body and its different organs. Swami Sivananda The Taoists, on the other hand, not only support sexual activity, but have many Taoist methods and techniques for the practice of sex however, without the loss of semen or fluids. A person's approach to sexuality is a sign of his level of evolution. Unevolved persons practice ordinary sexual intercourse, placing all emphasis upon the sexual organs. They neglect the body's other organs and systems. Whatever physical energy is accumulated is summarily discharged and the subtle energies are similarly dissipated and disordered. It is a great backward leap. For those who aspire to the high realms of living, there is angelic dual cultivation. Lao Tzu It should be noted that not all Taoists practice semen retention, and some recommend a frequency schedule of ejaculation based on age, season, and body constitution. It could be extrapolated that the increase in sexual activity will lead to an increase in semen buildup in the prostate, and without an ejaculation, the body will need to excrete semen through the urine or resorb it back into the body. Many have proclaimed the benefits of resorbing semen back into the body. This could perhaps indicate that Taoists resorb more semen than their non-practicing counterparts, the brahmacharis. This resorption of semen is said to have a powerful regenerative effect on the body. But does it influence longevity? It begs the question. If resorbed semen nourishes and regenerates the body, and eunuchs can't produce semen, then why did eunuchs live longer than semen producing males? Are the benefits of semen retention due to the fact that our body doesn't work as hard to produce semen? Or are the benefits of retention due to the regenerative effects of the resorption of semen back into the body? This is an important distinction that hasn't yet reached a public consensus. To my knowledge, there are no comparative studies that have analysed such differences, and therefore we have no definitive data to confirm this either way. The Taoist methods involve sexual stimulation and thus perhaps produce higher level secretions of testosterone compared to their non-sex practicing counterparts, the brahmachari. From research we have learnt that increased testosterone negatively affects longevity. On the other hand, however, it is said that testosterone increases virility, aggressiveness and male secondary sexual characteristics. 
Although we can scientifically quantify levels of testosterone produced in the body, we cannot quantify levels of ojas which are said to be produced when practicing brahmacharya. Ojas is a spiritual and energetic concept of vitality that cannot be measured scientifically. That is not to imply ojas does not exist, but rather that its substance may be too broad and profound to measure with the narrow spectrum of data. At this point in time, coming to a definitive conclusion on the superior path is a futile effort. If you were not born into either of these philosophies, then perhaps you can try both and decide on which lifestyle works best for you. As we delve further into the subtleties of each practice, we move beyond the quantifiable realms of science and must rely on our personal observations to obtain the best result. Try them both and proceed accordingly. The qualities of magnetism. We feel it in the presence of particular individuals. The way they move, the way they speak, the way they make us feel. An uncontrolled ball of energy can well up from inside, just from being within range of one of these magnetic beings. Their aura wields a natural force much like an electrical current that everyone in the vicinity instinctively feels. In watching their interactions, we can see others fall deeply under the spell of their charm. In a group setting, they appear as the star of the show, the life of the party, bursting with potential energy that everyone eagerly feeds off. It's difficult to quantify this visceral feeling with language. However, it is a common enough phenomenon that perhaps most have experienced it at some point. What is this magnetic quality that we are experiencing? It is one of nature's unfailing laws that the best of her species shall possess the greatest powers of transmitting their kind, and who can for one instant question the conclusion that vigorous sexual powers, temperately and legitimately used, actually brighten and strengthen a man's every faculty, elevate and inspire his every ambition, giving him greater influence and capacity for anything he may attempt in life. But few men by their own efforts have ever accomplished anything of value in life who are not gifted also with a strong sexual instinct. The power of magnetism lies with our sexual nature. Over the last century, many publications on this topic have attributed the power of magnetism to man's sexual nature. The desire to procreate builds up immense energy within us. When we don't allow this energy to be wasted, it develops into a very potent force. If we wish to make success of our lives, we must follow the plan of our divine creator, as he intended. And the most important of the lessons we have to learn is that of the right control of the forces generated within. Bear in mind that by retaining these fluids, you furnish the highest type of material for building perfect brain cells, as well as developing a magnetic attraction that consciously or unconsciously will impress all with whom you have dealings. The conservation of sex force will perpetually rejuvenate the whole body and preserve your strength to extreme old age. We must become aware of habits that both regenerate and degenerate our body. Our body is in constant motion, moving either towards growth or towards destruction. The importance of retaining the sexual power, of using it wisely and temperately, cannot be overestimated. It is paramount. Lose your sexual power, lose the power to reproduce your species, and, according to the laws of nature, your days of usefulness are past, and decay and death will soon overtake you. Impotence, sexually, means impotence in everything, impotence mentally, physically, socially, etc. Your powers are fast waning. You might just as well be laid away without further notice. The most disagreeable of persons is the one who has wasted all of his vitality, retaining no magnetic force. The brain being the greatest sufferer cannot do its best work. Each one can prove this for himself by observing such men and women as are addicted to sensuous lives who come under this notice. Many geniuses who accomplished wonders in a few years and gave brilliant promise for the future have suddenly found themselves deprived of their mental powers as a result of giving way to their sensuous nature, and it has been repeatedly proven that a sensual nature cannot produce anything of lasting value. Such an ending to the upward flight of a nature which had early given promise of a high career is sad to behold. If we enter into a state of regeneration, our body will begin to build upon the more subtle qualities of our organism that contribute to the essence of one's magnetism. 
the energy in the eyes, the complexion of the skin, the vitality in the voice, the other countless improvements that people subconsciously pick up on during interactions that create this sense of enigmatic power. Where the conditions are such as these, a store of life energy is gathered in the body which throws out all worn out atoms, sends new life into those that are exhausted, revivifies the brain cells. Creation, procreation, regeneration thus provides a more efficient instrument for mental work and generates a store of personal magnetism which inevitably draws to the individual the esteem of people he deals with as well as every good thing in the universe. This is the regenerative effect of a sex function, rightly, intelligently and purely exercised. It seems the perspective of magnetism being intrinsically connected to sex force has been long held throughout the ages. The fact that so many separate publications have alluded to the same cause only strengthens the argument for preservation. If you wish to generate your own aura of powerful magnetism, try it out. Retain your sex energy for six months and see where life takes you. Why are we attracted to beauty? To signal. A signal of optimal immunity and health. And why are we attracted to good health? Survival. We survive with good health and immunity. We die from ill health and physical degeneration. Beauty and good health is the antithesis to death and physical degeneration. Anything close to the source of life we gravitate towards, and beauty is a symbol of life. When our organism exists in an optimal growth state, it will develop in accordance with nature's design. Some may refer to this design as the Fibonacci sequence. There is much to these designs we are yet to fully comprehend. However, when allowed to grow in accordance with nature, we instinctively sense this through the aesthetic of beauty. Beauty is a signal to us that nature is taking her course, uninterrupted and as intended. Each human body in existence today is the result of many, many human lives before us that reproduced and died over and over to create the body we have today. The lifestyles of our ancestors also plays a role in our current physical condition. It explains our ancestral traits and tendencies. While we have no control over our ancestral inheritances, we do have agency over our current life. If we choose to live in accordance with the laws of nature, we will grow and develop towards nature's ideal sequence and thus towards beauty itself. The ejaculation and subsequent loss of semen or fluids is a highly taxing process on the human organism. To the extent that repeated expenditure of semen will markedly decrease the lifespan of the organism. Semen contains highly nutritious fats, lipids, minerals, phosphorus and other essential minerals found throughout the body and in particularly concentrated amounts within the brain and nervous tissues. Expending these elements on a regular basis leads to deficiency which manifests physically as ugliness and degeneration. If we wish to strive for beauty, we must first rid ourselves of the habits that prevent optimal conditions for the organism. Sexual excess is the first habit we must address. If you have kept this habit for many years, then do not expect change to occur immediately. It is a long-term process. It took many years to reach your current state and it will take a significant amount of time to restore optimal growth and development. If you are reading this and wanting to increase your health, beauty and overall integrity of your own organism, then the time is now. Put a stop to your semen loss. What is the difference between your body and a corpse? Life. What is life? Energy. How can we convert our energy into physical substance? Ejaculation. What do we lose upon ejaculation? Energy. And what is that energy? Life. 
Every ejaculation is a small loss of your life force. Repeated over time, this loss increases significantly. This negative result manifests as degradation of your physical and mental capacities. If you squeeze a single drop of lemon juice out of a lemon every day, you won't notice the loss immediately, but over time the lemon will dry up, lose its pulpy composition, and decompose at an accelerated rate. Put this next to a lemon that hasn't had its juice continuously squeezed out, and you'll see the contrast. Which lemon appears to be more succulent, more juicy, and full of life? What we are becoming aware of is that there is a price to pay for creating life. The price is that we must sacrifice a little piece of our own life to produce it. Some may even regard this as a piece of our own consciousness, a piece of our own soul. One semen emission will not kill you, but it will take a toll on your energy expenditure, which will carry consequences for your body and its functioning systems. The benefit of retaining your semen is that you are not continuously losing your life force. Your car, constantly running it with a tank close to empty, is bad for its life expectancy. Your smartphone, not charging it fully before use will ultimately shorten the battery life. Energy sources require optimal energy for optimal functioning. What does continual loss of life energy look like? Degeneration. Degeneration of the flesh, the blood, the organs, and so on, due to lack of vital energies. Very few indeed are aware that by gratifying their senses through the indulgence of secret practices or solitary vices, they are purchasing a fleeting pleasure at the expense of their richest blood, that by frequent repetition they are wasting the manhood which should be their strength and glory, and by their own act making of themselves weaklings and degenerates. We can choose to either degenerate or regenerate through the lifestyle habits we make. Pay very close attention to the habits that sap your energy and those that generate energy. Semen retention is perhaps the most effective course of action you can take for protecting the universal energy force that lies within you. Protect it at all costs. Desire. What separates us from animals? Self-awareness. Between our instinctual urges and our actions lies the voice of reason. If we can find a higher purpose, we are able to override our animal instincts. We can hold an ideal in higher regard than gratification of our senses. This is an ability that although within reach, few people accomplish. It is but repetition of the conviction of the greatest thinkers and of the mystics and the spiritual leaders of all ages that for every person who wished to advance in evolution and to attain real happiness, there comes a time when desires must starve, the animal passions must die. Nothing hinders us so much in the development and exercise of our powers as our external desires. Those powers are, even by the slightest application of desire, disturbed and hindered. Therefore, all desire must eventually perish. But need not perish by the painful process of being killed by force. By transmutation, the lower desires will automatically shrink, dissolve and vanish. Suffering will then yield its place to constant exaltation. For freedom from desire, like the choicest extract from the choicest treasure, Divine influences will come to him who liberates his soul of all carnal desires. We may be bound in this life to our physical senses, yet we need not be controlled by them. We are aware that we are a part of something bigger. Our perceptions lie within a limited spectrum of consciousness. The colors we see, the sounds we hear, the vibrations we exist on, they all have upper and lower limits to what we can perceive Yet we know that there exists realms beyond those limits. The hummingbird has four color cones in their eyes that allow them to see many more colors than humans can experience. The fourth cone that humans don't possess allow hummingbirds to detect UV. A wider range of animals can hear sounds that we cannot hear. 
Our frequency of audible perception is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. A bat's hearing range is from 9 Hz to 120 kHz. Animals such as dogs, cats, mice, elephants, horses, dolphins, and more are perceiving vibrations in this world that we are unable to perceive. They are living in a universe that we don't have access to. Humanity and the self are intrinsically connected. We can sense something that exists beyond our senses. It's difficult to quantify in words. We operate like some kind of cog in a complex machine. But paradoxically, the machine we are building towards is our self. When we realize that the good of humanity is for the good of the self, we can act in accordance with ideals that are beyond our base desires. Sacrificing our sensual enjoyment for higher purpose is evolution. When you stop chasing desire and start working for humanity, you harness the powers of the universe. When you conserve your life force energies, they build up into a tidal wave of unstoppable force. This force is transmuted into your life's work, which ripples throughout the universe, deeply affecting every cell in every being in existence. We have seen this great power wielded throughout history by the greats, Tesla, Gandhi, Beethoven, Da Vinci. Their efforts have greatly shaped the world in which we live today. If you are to tap into this higher vibration of existence, of creative genius, then the control of your animalistic desires is of paramount importance. Your life is much like a cup of water. Every day you spill a few drops, and at night those drops are replenished by sleep. By the next morning you are again one full cup. Over time, however, this cup loses volume as the body is unable to replenish the water at the same speed that you are expending it. Each ejaculation of semen is perhaps akin to an extra mouthful of water spilling from your cup. Your body will work hard to restore the cup, drawing energy from every cell in your body or every drop of water in the cup. Over time, this will empty the cup at a much faster rate than one who wasn't wasting their seed. Not only that, but the cleanliness and purity of the water will be significantly lowered. The ancient medical literature of Ayurveda states that semen is derived from marrow, which is formed from flesh and blood in stepwise manner. Blood is formed from food, therefore Semen is derived from food in a multi-step process of purification and filtration. During each step of this process, there occurs 40 times condensation and ultimately one drop of semen is formed from 40 drops of bone marrow. Due to these reasons, semen is considered as highly precious body fluid. It is also mentioned that semen attributes to physical beauty, physical strength and mental strength. End quote. Loss of semen leads to loss of happiness, loss of memory, and loss of vigor. Stated in texts from 110 years ago, Fowler said, Those who unnaturally excessively expend along sexual lines what may seem to them to be exclusively sexual energy, available only for expression, thereby deprive the system at large of what might have become general stimulation and vitality. Health and strength are certainly not increased by indulgence. Remember always that the sex organs are for generative purposes. The seed retained in the body will be reabsorbed and will wonderfully increase your vitality and strengthen both body and mind. End quote. The awareness of semen's power, its necessity of preservation, and consequences of excess have been known for centuries, or even millennia, throughout many cultures, from the Bible, to Taoism, to ancient Indian culture, even to the European medical practitioners from centuries before. How could all this accumulated knowledge, born from different countries and cultures over different times, all arrive at the same conclusion?
One of the most commonly purported benefits of semen retention is its effect on the eyes. The eyes are said to become clear, sharp, magnetic, and charming after periods of sexual abstinence. Out of all areas of the body, why is it that the eyes are most notably improved on retention? Semen excretions tax the brain, blood, and nervous tissues of vital nutrients and energy. A taxed brain will provide less support to the eyes, nerves, and all other organs and tissues throughout the body. Eyes carry a direct connection with the brain via the optic nerve. The eye is connected to the nervous system, with the brain as a centerpiece of the system. When looking at how both organs function, the eye and brain show similar needs for nutritional support. Out of the brain, nerves and eyes, it is the eyes that are most visible to the outsider. Much biological information of the mental and physical state of the organism is transmitted through the eyes. For this reason, the eyes play an important role in the process of mate selection. A potential mate can gauge much biological information from your eyes alone. We do not get to see the direct degradation of the brain tissue as it is contained within the skull and under flesh. The degradation is however visually reflected in the eyes. Not only are eyes the windows to the soul, they have also been described as windows to the brain. Researchers found various associations with the eye's functional integrity and brain condition. Sperm production draws much of the same ingredients for nourishment and nutrition as the brain and nervous tissues. According to R. W. Bernard on the topic of abstinence, sperm production and brain functioning use much of the same resources and thus excess use of the former can lead to degradation of the latter by way of nutritional deficiency. The eyes receive nutrition directly from the brain and nervous system. If sexual excess leads to undernourishment and degradation of the brain and nerves, then this will have a tremendous impact on the health state of the eyes. There is perhaps a lot more that science will unravel about the brain, eye and testes connection. The key concept however is simple. We should be very aware of our own energy expenditures. It can be seen by others very easily, a lot more than you perhaps think. When you lose semen, the consequences are written all over your face and body. Be wary. The more energy preserved, the more energy our body can put towards regeneration and revitalization of the body. Preserve your seed and your body will have a strong supply of nourishment for all other parts of your body. Your eyes will shine and carry a magnetic quality that people will innately sense. This effect will contribute to your overall aura that people experience when interacting with you. Semen preservation is a cornerstone of optimal health. Its benefits will seep into every part of your being down to the last cell. Try it for yourself. It is said that we are the universe becoming aware of itself. The universe experiencing itself through our own eyes. The powerful energies of the cosmos are circulating inside of us. Less than an ounce of this energy is enough to create new life. When you are retaining your seed, the contents of the universe itself is accumulating and condensing its energies inside of you. Much like the forming of a galaxy over billions of years, the universe within you powerfully expands. Taoist master Mantak Chia said, Sperm is the storehouse of male sexual energy. A single ejaculation has 200 to 500 million sperm, each a potential human being. There are enough spermatosa lost in a single orgasm to populate the entire United States if each cell was to fertilize an egg. The manufacture of a sperm fluid capable of such psychic superpotency consumes up to a third of a man's daily energy output. End quote. 
the life force that grows inside of us when we retain, puts us in tune with nature. Our experience of reality begins to shift. The universe will work hard to accommodate you. Opportunities start to come your way. People gravitate towards you. Your presence will affect other people on a deep visceral level. It sounds almost unreal, but every day new accounts of these experiences are written about through various retention communities. After abstinence, many have reported their lives drastically improving in many aspects, physically, mentally, and spiritually. The term trust the universe may seem abstract and spiritual, but there's a very practical element to this meaning. The universe wants us to evolve and develop. Evolution is its purpose. If we move in accordance with the laws of nature, then nature will guide us to what we are seeking. This is a naturally occurring process. Your powers of intellect, intuition and life purpose will strengthen and increase exponentially. For monks and ascetics, this evolution will be a spiritual one. For a businessman, they'll excel in their field of work. For an artist, they'll be able to tap into the deepest creative powers available to man. Regardless of the field of life you are in, the build-up of your energy will nourish your brain, body and spirit. It will guide you. It will affect those around you too. They will sense your growing aura very deeply. Retention will over time propel you to great heights of achievement. Many of the world's greatest men attributed their genius to sexual abstinence and semen preservation. Tesla once said, I recognize the importance that sex plays in the life of man. Nature has made its attraction irresistible to ensure the perpetuity of the race. As for myself, I have found that the thinker is confronted with the problem of perpetuating either the species or mind. Before I produced the rotating magnetic field, I concentrated all my powers upon my experiment. The strain would have killed a hundred oxen. I certainly could not have survived it if I had permitted my energies to be diverted into the channels of sex." End quote. Preserving your seed is the secret to connecting yourself with the divine power of the universe. Over time you will undergo a transformation. You will vibrate at a higher frequency, attract new people, new experiences, and delve into new realms of existence. Words don't go nearly far enough to convey the deep significance found in sexual abstinence. It is much a mental journey as it is a physical one as much a physical journey as it is a spiritual one. They are all connected. Experience it for yourself. Sexual instinct. Humanity depends on it. We have been designed to value procreation above all else. However, procreation shortens life. Animals that reproduce die sooner, humans included. At the same time, Society tells us that sex and masturbation are perfectly harmless, that the dangers of masturbation are a great myth passed down throughout history, and we're supposed to believe this. It's a facade. To reproduce at the cost of all else. This is why you are here to carry on the genetic code inside of you and pass it on to the next generation. The continuation of our species takes precedence over the individual organism. Reproduction hastens death. We are scheduled to die. Based on much research, the overarching conclusion of reproduction is that it will slowly degenerate our organism's physical integrity and ultimately shorten our life. The disposable soma theory of aging explains this mechanism in depth. Semen retention is the natural state of animals and insects outside of mating times. To carry on the genetic code inside of you and pass it on to the next generation. 
How do we simultaneously acknowledge the life-shortening effects of sexual activity and promote the active loss of semen as a harmless exercise? The relationship between sex and lifespan has been known since ancient times. Evidence of the dangers of sexual fluid loss and excess can be seen in the Bible and ancient Hindu and Hermetic texts, in the writings of renowned Greek and Roman philosophers, and so on. Hippocrates believed that seminal losses caused tabis dorsalis, a fatal wasting disease. Plato considered semen as coming from the spinal marrow. Pythagoras called semen the flower of the purest blood and demanded chastity from all of his students. Aristotle believed there was an intimate connection between the testicular fluid and the brain and nervous tissues. He referred to the semen as the most perfect part of the body. These philosophers conserved their sexual force in what is known today as semen retention. Both Plato and Aristotle throughout their lives adhered strictly to the rules of chastity, the path which Pythagoras recommended for the attainment of the highest intellectual, physical and spiritual perfection. Epicurus, who practiced Pythagorean continence, considered the semen as part of the mind and soul, meaning that when conserved, it is taken up to the brain, which it nourishes and strengthens, whereas its loss weakens the brain, as self-observation and experience proves. Galleon summarized the views of the physicians and philosophers of antiquity when he wrote, In emissions of semen we lose at the same time the vital force. It is not therefore surprising that too frequent coition innovates, since it deprives the body of its purest parts. That the great minds of history could arrive at very similar conclusions regarding the cost of reproduction only serves to enforce the recent discoveries by scientists and doctors of the consequences of reproduction on the organism and its lifespan. A eunuch is a man who has had his testicles removed and usually worked as guards or servants in harems or other women's quarters. It has long been said that eunuchs lived longer and never went bald. We have learnt from research that castration has many biological effects on the organism, both positive and negative. One effect of particular relevance is the increase in lifespan. A 2012 study on the lifespans of Korean eunuchs concluded that eunuchs lived on average 14 to 19 years longer than non-castrated men of that era. The researchers concluded that male sex hormones may negatively influence lifespan and thus we see a difference between male and female life expectancies. The research findings of the eunuchs point to the same conclusions as that of the research in animals and lifespan, that reproduction comes at a cost to the organism. If we wish to conserve our life energies, we must not spend them on meaningless sexual activity. For the sake of procreation can be seen as a necessary sacrifice, but for the sake of momentary pleasure would be a tremendous waste. The End Point There will come a time when you have absorbed enough of what you need to know to master semen retention and integrate it successfully into your life. If you feel that you can continue this practice without the payment of conscious attention, then perhaps it is this time. That is to say, it is time to move on. What does this mean? Once you embody and master this habit of semen retention, then it can be practiced without the application of conscious thought. The habit of semen retention carries the ingredients to you reaching your success in life, but it is not the object of success itself. The success lies outside of semen retention and inside the field of your life's work. Semen retention is a very powerful force, but especially so when melded with the pursuit of your undertaking. Semen retention is to accompany your journey and not to become the journey itself. Making retention your central life focus is productive up until the point you have firmly absorbed its teachings. Eventually, there is an inevitable point of diminishing returns. To invest too much time into the study of it will of course hinder the pursuit of your life's work, which will also require much energy and study. If you haven't reached a point where you can carry out retention unconsciously, then you should stay. 
If you haven't yet absorbed enough of the teachings of Sema Retention, then by all means, keep on studying. Find the resources from anywhere that you need. They're out there if you look. But know that there comes a time when you must graduate from this period of education, embody it in your life, and free your conscious thought for the pursuit of your life's work. Because this is why you are here. That time doesn't have to be now, but be aware that this time will one day eventually come. If you are ready, then it is time to invest your valuable energies into your life's purpose. Your continual adherence to this practice will continue to pay dividends into your life without focusing conscious attention to it. What do you want to do with your time on this earth? This is all a game you have elected to play. Can you sum up your life's work on earth in one sentence? Try it. Your ears hearing you verbalize this purpose will take immediate effect. It will strengthen your vision and prepare you down to the cellular level for what needs to be done to achieve your outcome. Remember, your body is a powerful energetic instrument that materializes energy into the physical plane. This is an important step. Write your mission statement down and say it to yourself so that it can audibly enter deep into your brain. With semen retention, you have the blueprints to achieve genius. But the blueprint is not enough. You need to start the real journey. Semen retention is the supercar you can use on your road to success. But keep in mind, you still need to drive the car. You still need to start your journey into your chosen field. Much like an artist who has mastered his craft, every stroke of the brush is made without conscious thought of all the techniques he has developed. The technique becomes ingrained in the subconscious and guides the hand accordingly without particular thought. Once the way of semen retention is firmly established within you, it is time for you to move on to the act of creation. This is what you are here for. This is where your life awaits. I will remain here, and if the practice of retention inspires you, then by all means, continue to follow deeper down the paths and branches of knowledge. But for some, or perhaps many of you, semen retention is not the end goal. Success in your field and progress in your life is perhaps the ultimate goal. For those people, much energy will be required to take action towards those goals. You know how it works. You know the benefits, but at some point you must start the climb from the bottom of the mountain. The rest of your life is a journey up this mountain. You have received the secret treasure that will help you tremendously along the way. It will put you far in front, provide you much stamina, make you stand out from the hordes of lost souls. You will amass untold powers with your guarded gem. Those around you will instinctively feel the powers you wield as you continue this path and climb the mountain towards the peak of your life's work. What is money? Money is paper. Paper with numbers printed on it to represent value. What makes it powerful? A long time ago, a group of people created this product and convinced all the other people alive that their paper, and their paper only, contains value. The owners of this product could print any amount of this paper at any time. Money now controls the world. How did this come to be? Where does the power in all of this lie? Belief. Money is value because we believe it to be. If everybody simultaneously refused to recognize its value, it would instantly be rendered worthless. The power of belief is real. Many people perhaps don't realize this, but when they believe in something, they are transferring a portion of their own energy into the existence of that object. We are all aware of this on some level. It's why we take to heart the beliefs of others, even at the expense of our own. This ancient knowledge has been known and used to set up some of the biggest institutions in human history. It is not that we believe things because they are true. It is that things become true because we believe them to be. That is how the universe works. 
and the majority of the world doesn't seem to recognize this fully. They don't seem to be aware of the infinite powers that lie dormant inside of themselves, inside of you. These powers can be activated at any time. Your body is an electrical receiver that can harness accumulated energy to manifest inner thing from the outer realms into the physical plane, into reality. It is perhaps impossible to conceptualize what we humans really are from an outside perspective, but there is more at play here than what meets the eye. As Alan Watts said, trying to define yourself is like trying to bite your own teeth. We have no frame of reference to objectively see something we are incapable of separating ourselves from. We are in too deep. The epitome of this universe is inside of you. It's what you came from. You have grown from the universe and are now manifesting its will, your will. You are it. You create anything and everything you believe to be true. Much like a sculptor using raw materials of reality to sculpt his art into the physical form. This world is but a dream. One third of your lifetime is spent existing in dreams, which are worlds much like this one created by your thoughts and beliefs. Over 2000 years ago, Chinese philosopher Chang Tzu wrote, Once upon a time, I, Chang Tzu, dreamt I was a butterfly, fluttering hither and thither, to all intents and purposes, a butterfly. I was conscious only of my happiness as a butterfly, unaware that I was Chang Tzu, Soon I awakened, and there I was, veritably myself again. Now, I do not know whether I was a man dreaming I was a butterfly, or whether I am now a butterfly dreaming I am a man. Think for a second. What is a dream? It's stimuli that your brain is interpreting. But then what is reality? It's stimuli that your brain is interpreting. So what is the difference? A dream appears unreal from the perspective of reality. But how does reality appear from the perspective of a dream? Your existence here is far beyond the limits of your own perception. There are infinite dimensions that are existing within us. Everything that you believe to be true can be materialized into this world. Humans carry the ancient ability to perform alchemy. Every invention on this planet was once previously an intangible concept. Our bodies pulled these ideas from the ether and into existence. Our bodies are that powerful. You have within you the power to materialize anything you want. All you need to do is visualize it, fantasize about it, and feel it deeply. Like when you were a child. Become aware that you have this special ability. You manifest things into reality with your beliefs. So treat it with the respect it deserves, and acknowledge the power that exists within you. If you can truly understand this, it will become a very powerful tool for you in this world. So many of us have forgotten how to use this. Within this understanding comes the most vital seed of knowledge. You are God. This world and everything in it was created by you. Without you here, this all ceases to exist. I'm not really here, nor is anyone else. It's just you.